In PTE AV Studio 11, we have a new option called Smoothing Motion, sometimes referred to as Smooth Move. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. There are five keyframes that control this balloon as it moves up and down. But the smoothness that we see when it changes direction is what the Smooth Move is creating. Now we can see exactly the same here using three portrait format images. Smooth Move does exactly what the title suggests. Let's take a look at this in the Objects and Animations screen. Now if we look at the same hot air balloon without the Smooth Move applied, you can see the difference, the abrupt change in direction every time the balloon rises or falls. Now the smooth move is only available on the pan controls so let's apply them and you'll see how easy it is. They have to be applied to the keyframe preceding the movement so if I go to my first keyframe and up to the top right to the pan there we'll find smooth move. Quick and easy to apply. But as it comes down to the bottom, I need the same smooth move here. And so on, all the way through these keyframes. And within a few seconds, we've got that lovely smooth movement reapplied. It's pretty quick and easy, but something I think that's going to be well worth the effort. Now as you can see by my title on screen, we can now export slides to images but we can include transparent parts of the slide and even slides that are part way through a transition. Let's take a look. So with this project open on screen, I have stopped the animation of what you can see in the mini player. It's about to do or part way through a 180 degree turn. So if we wanted to save that just as it is, we need to go to our publish option, top left, there's the command we need. Now the important thing we need here is this little box here that says I want the current position. So if we need to take a slide to an image in between the transition we do need to tick this box. We get the opportunity to choose JPEG or PNG and we get an opportunity to set the width and height Probably not a good idea to make these larger than the actual images we're using, of course. Then we just need a location and a name. I'm going to stay with the default name and drop it on my desktop just for speed. And then I'll open it up into Photoshop. And there we have the result. Let's go back to that project in the slide list. What we can do here is export a slide with transparency. So with this image highlighted, I'm going to go into the Objects and Animations screen. You can see that I've got seven inset images here, but they're positioned over a background. There's the background, I've called it Broken Blue. So with that highlighted on the bottom right corner, I'm going to delete it. So let's save the rest of these images with a transparent background. I'll close the Objects and Animation screen. We don't see anything here, but they're there all right. Let's go to the Publish option. Export slides to images once again. We don't need the current position now. We want selected slides because that's exactly what we're choosing. We don't want JPEG because we need to tick this box and at the moment it's greyed out. When I select PNG, PNG of course supports transparent backgrounds. So now I can tick and for speed, well we'll open this up on the desktop and then in Photoshop. There you can see the image I have open and we can clearly see the transparent background and you can also see I've made a selection of the image at the top left because if I had a need to cut it with Control X and then paste it into a different position 
I can do so. So we can export one or as many slides as we wish, even all of them if that's our need, even midway through a transition and with transparency too. But here's a tip. If you have an image with multiple keyframes, maybe one keyframe showing the image with 100% opacity and the next reducing the opacity to zero, make sure before you copy the slide that all keyframes show 100% opacity.